Chris, what's up, buddy? Oh, not much, man. Got the A250 in the rack and about to cable it up. What do you mean it's not actually an A250? What the hell is a Fast 500F? What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Nick Howell. Thank you very much for joining us today. I hope you guys liked that video from last week, the unboxing and all of the new direction we're taking here with the channel. Uh, as you saw at the beginning though, we had a little bit of breaking news. This is not an A250, come to find out. It is a FAS 500F. What is that? Well, let's talk about it. The A250 and the FAS 500F are Cousins, you could say loosely. Uh, they use the exact same architecture platform and hardware. It's just a difference in the power requirements and the use of NVMe flash versus SAS flash uh, with QLC drives. Really all you need to know, your requirements and your mileage may vary, but just know that you have options out there if you want to run 110 versus 220 in your power or if you want to run different uh, types of capacity flash drives. Talk to your account reps or your peers and uh, figure out which one that you want to use. Today, we are getting this thing prepped to go in the rack, and I wanted to go over uh, how we cable the entire thing up before we put it in the rack. So let, I'm going to flip it around, and we're going to go over all of the cabling one by one because this little box, it's pretty easy to do. So if we come into the individual ports here, the very first thing that you've got to hook up are your console cables. So I am using a USB flat ribbon cable that just goes straight into RJ45 on your IOIOI ports. Click them in right there and then hook it up to your USBs, connect it with putty uh, and your COM ports. The next one you wanna do is your management ports right next to it. So where your little wrench ports, I use yellow for management. You can use whatever color you like. There you go, hook the, with those guys up. They go to a any of your one gig core switches or if you've got a specialized IT management switch. Now the next one is where we start getting a little bit interesting. We're gonna hook up our cluster components which are your E0C and your E0D ports right here. Now these are interesting because if you have more than two nodes, so if you have four or six or eight or 24 nodes of this, you're going to need an intercluster switch, which is a back-end switch that allows you to connect it up. The beauty of this is that these are 25 gig ports, and you, oop, I put it in upside down. There we go. And you simply connect one E0C to the other E0C. Done and done. And then we're gonna do the exact same thing for the E0D ports. I'm gonna hook those up right there. Bam, now this thing has intercluster communications. You can hook it up to do basically anything you want. Right now, as it sits, we could configure this as it is. We can install on tap, we can update firmware, we can do everything we need to. The second that we need to start serving data with it though, we're gonna need some more cables. So these are where your, and this is where your configuration will vary on every single use case. But since we've got the MES cards in there with the 25 gig ports, uh, we're going to take just one from each. I'll start at the bottom. Put it in there. And put one in there. And the other side, we're going to wire up to our switch in just a few minutes when we get this thing in the rack. So that's it. Took me, what, 60 seconds to cable the whole thing up? Connect your cluster components, connect your management and console ports. Once you get your consoles done, leave those in a jump host, uh, any kind of KVM system that you have to make sure that you can always get this. Um, in a, the next video, we're going to be setting up our BMC and our service processor. So that is a way that you can SSH into the console. That's an interesting one. Um, and don't forget that you have so much connectivity options here. I'm only using TwinX. Uh, 10 gig here, but you can use up to 25 gig. You can use breakout cables with the Cisco or Mellanox 100 gig switches in order to make this a little bit more efficient. And if you've got multiple cluster components, you simply hook these into a back end switch in order to scale this up to 24 nodes or 12 nodes uh, for uh, if you're doing SAN. So that's it guys, uh, cabling it all up. Um, I'm gonna throw this thing in the rack and then we can show you guys how we hook it up to the switch. So there you 
amazing it is to cable up one of our all-flash FAS systems, or frankly, all of our FAS systems are pretty easy to cable up. They only get more complex as you scale out, but they're pretty easy to keep up with. Hey, make sure you subscribe uh, because you're not going to want to miss the next couple of videos. Now that we've got it in the rack, we're going to fire it up, we're going to put some licenses on it, we're going to update all of the firmware and on tap, and then throw some data on there and start serving it and do some testing. So make sure you got your notifications on so you don't miss it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Take care.